What? Uncle Sam cried. Is someone trying to harm you? I'll send... No, Fraser interrupted. It's not that troublesome. I only need money to solve this problem. I need a few million dollars. Oh, you gave me a fright. Old Sam sighed in relief. Oh, forget about the money. Whatever amount you need, it's yours. He hesitated and then began. But... There's no need to say anything else, Fraser interrupted. I understand that since I'm asking for help, my agreement to separate myself from the family will become invalid. However, I can't return just yet. Really? Uncle Sam was excited to hear Fraser's words. He had been waiting to hear them for years. Good, this won't be a problem. As long as you agree to return to the family, everything is fine. You know... Amongst all the successors in the Macklemore family, the one your father values the most is you. Fraser became silent for a moment. He really didn't want to talk about this topic. He cleared his throat and tried to get the conversation back on track. <clears throat> uh, how long until the money gets here? You should still know my private account information. However, Uncle Sam was still going on about the family. Fraser, I won't hide it from you. After your father found out that you were in San Clemente, he secretly purchased the largest company there, the Robster Corporation, in your name. You have plenty of money. You can just go and take over the company. Hearing that, Fraser pursed his lips. It seemed that even though he had been away from home for many years, his father was still thinking about him. Otherwise, according to the nature of the Macklemore family, they wouldn't have even considered buying a business in a place as small as San Clemente. Uncle Sam went on. You should also know that one of the members of the Orange County Chamber of Commerce also has ties to the family. In addition... Your family has ties with several other businesses in the area as well. Okay, thanks for the heads up, Fraser said shortly. We'll talk again soon. After hanging up, Fraser took out a pack of cheap cigarettes, lit one up, and took a long drag. He sighed. Ugh. It looks like the days ahead are going to be far from peaceful, he thought. Members of the wealthy class never seemed to be able to escape from their obligations. Fraser had chosen to leave his family because he didn't want to live a life of deception. But now, he had to face it bravely because his wife was being bullied. After letting out a long puff of smoke, he put out the cigarette and tossed it into the garbage. He then got into his car and drove to a corporate headquarters building across town. It was one of the largest companies in San Clemente, and he had been here many times during the past three months because he had been in charge of distributing and putting up flyers. The two women who worked at the front desk always gave him a hard time. After parking the car, Fraser walked into the lobby on the first floor and was immediately noticed by the two women. Fraser, it's you again! One of the young ladies snapped. You really have some nerve coming here again and again, the other announced coldly. Well, don't come in. You're not allowed here anymore. Look at the notice. She pointed at the board behind her, which had a black and white photo of Fraser mounted on it. Take a good look, the first woman said indignantly. You've been put on our blacklist. I designed this announcement myself. How about that? Fraser craned his head and saw that under his photo there was a short blurb. He read it silently. Fraser, a useless salesperson at the Philly Group, has repeatedly snuck into our office area to distribute unwanted flyers. This worthless person, whose wife has repeatedly cheated on him, is not welcome in the building. Recently, the women's restroom has been subjected to a peeping Tom, and we suspect that Fraser is the culprit. As such, he's been put on the company's blacklist. If anyone sees him on the premises, contact security or a staff member immediately. 
After reading the description, Fraser frowned and thought, If they don't want me to put up flyers, that's fine. But why drag my name through the mud? Fraser took a deep breath and resisted the urge to lower himself to the level of the two women at the desk. He ignored the notice and said coolly, Tell Mr. Wilson that I would like to see him. Now? Who's here to see Mr. Wilson? Asked a voice from behind him. At that moment, a balding middle-aged man walked out of the elevator. When he saw Fraser, he heaved a sigh and said, Oh, yeah, so it's you. What are you doing here? Still trying to sell properties? The man walked up to Fraser and sneered. Hmm, maybe you're trying to sell your own property? Isn't it on the smaller side? Do you think my boss would like that? You're a fool. One of the women at the desk piped up. Mr. Cole, I agree. Do you want me to call security? She reached for the desk phone and started pressing the buttons. Fraser narrowed his eyes, snorted quietly, and then he smiled. He took a step back and sat down on the couch in the waiting area. Mr. Cole and the others stared at him in surprise. Well, you're right about one thing, Fraser said calmly. I'm here today to sell my house to your boss. In fact, I don't want to sell one property. I want to sell him 100. 